Hey, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and it's been a long day of graphic jamming, I have to say. So I want to show you something. So I have made the um, Amy's version, and she was doing the dark colorway. So you can see here we are, and this is our magenta movements. And, uh, and so we're gonna make five of the same block, and this is the block. It's pretty cute, it's pretty easy when you cut the right one. So let me show you the one that I made you for the video. <laughs> it's like the tiny version. So this is what I might call my Spinal Tap Stonehenge moment. But as you know, there is a wall hanging and there's a bed quilt version. And I don't know, you know, life has happened. I've had a busy two weeks. You know, there's, there's a lot going on. I had my first facial yesterday, so I'm gonna blame being totally relaxed on that. Well, anyway, I Xeroxed, yes, I still say Xerox. I Xeroxed the wrong one and that's okay, I made a cute little block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this together and I'm gonna use it for the label on the back of the quilt when I'm all done. But don't worry, I'm making the small version, but if you're making the quilt version, you're gonna follow the same instructions that I did for your bed quilt, only I'm working in the miniature. Got it? <laughs> okay, and also I want you to notice in the later edits on this video as you watch it that I try to cover my tracks by acting like I meant to do this. No. Anyway, regardless, I hope that you enjoy and thank you for tuning in and uh, yeah, let's get to it. Here we are with um, this month's fabric selection. So you'll recognize color number six from last month. So that's what we're working with this month. Then we have color number seven. Color number seven is this purple with the little albums on it. And that's really cute. And um, then, you know, if you're doing the light background colorway, like the one on the cover of our book here, you're gonna be using your dark accent. Or if you're doing the black colorway like is on the back of the pattern then you're going to be using the light accent so i wanted to actually get your attention a little bit for our block this month there is two different sizes there is the quilt size and the wall hanging size so this month i'm actually going to be sewing the wall size and keep in mind in your different paper piecing templates here. You do have the wall sizes as well as the larger block sizes. Now I'm also going to make my normal large block size. So you can see here, so on page K is where you're actually going to be making your copies and you need five copies for this month because each block is the same. So this is the large quilt size and there's also a small size if, you're, if you wanna make the wall size. But of course, if you've started off making the bed quilt, you're gonna wanna continue to make the bed quilt sizes. But I just wanted to show you how to do a super tiny one just in case you wanted to make two or make something with your scraps. Here is the size that you will need if you want to try a wall hanging size and this is on page AA right here. Now on your pattern, um, just like every month, I recommend labeling. This month because I just had so um, many pieces the same sizes, I didn't use my pins that I usually use for the labeling. I just used a sticker to keep track of everything. And so that's the way I'm gonna keep track as I go along sewing. Let's go see how it gets stitched together. So here is what we're aiming to make. Obviously, this is the block for our light background. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. And we I just need to make four more of these. And uh, just to recap what we need for supplies, we need a brochure, we need a little bit of a glue stick, my steamless steam roller, my mini rotary cutter, and the add an eighth because these pieces are so tiny. This month I thought the add an eighth made more sense than the add a quarter. And then if we look over here, I'm still working with my light pad 
or my backlit matte, which I love, and also the one that doesn't have any lines on it. So I'm just gonna start building my piece, uh, piece by number, and it starts off with this center square. Just a little bit of a refresher here. I'm using my light pad that's fairly see-through so I can see on the other side there the lines and you can see they come through. So I'm gonna add a little dollop of glue so I can insert piece A1 into place. And I'm just centering it like that. Give it one second to dry and now I'm going to grab our next piece, which is A2. And A2, we need four of these. These are going to go around the square. But just like every other month, we need to turn this over here. Use our add an eighth ruler, our flyer. And I'm going to start cutting. And I'm just going to cut all the seam allowances on either side of the square. So I can go, my next piece is two, which it says two right there. And trim that excess. And now I'm gonna go over to across the street where it says three. And I'm gonna cut. And now I'm simply going to take piece two and I'm going to sew. And my sewing machine is set up for a straight stitch, center needle position. I'm using a 740 with the 97 D foot and I have decreased my stitch length to 1.8 millimeters. One of the things that I like to do to make sure that everything gets tucked away is just literally kind of hold my piece from the back like this and turn it over. And then I'm gonna stitch right on this first line here. And then I use my cutter to cut. My presser foot automatically lifts and then I'm just gonna turn my piece over. And at this point, I could finger press or I could use my steamless steamroller. Just like that. And now I'm gonna go across the street and add the other piece. Just like this, covering that line, turn it around, make sure that everything is nice and tidy underneath. And we're gonna line that up right under my foot and cut. Now it's pretty much this simple as we go along. So now I'm gonna take this piece back over and trim where pieces three and four will go. And then I'm just gonna keep building and it's opposite sides, then opposite sides. So one of the things that I did in my error <laughs> when I printed the wrong size paper piece template is I cut my pieces the size for the large one. So you'll see here as I'm building out this block, you're gonna see that my pieces are way, way bigger than they need to be. But don't worry, when you make your regular size piece for the bed quilt and you use the quarter inch ruler, you're gonna have enough as a little bit extra so you're not short. But, you know, lesson learned, everyone. Double check your work. <laughs> so once we have everything made like this and we've steamrolled our piece with the steamless steamroller, we're gonna turn it upside down and we're gonna cut on this outside line just there. So I'm still using my add an eighth ruler, but I'm lining it up just on that outside solid line and then I'm gonna cut. And once you get all of your pieces squared up, we're gonna sew three together and then leave the other two loose 
to assemble on our final month's meeting. So we have our five pieces here. So all we're gonna do is take our pieces and connect them. So it's fun putting these little blocks together because they go um, together a little bit faster than the large blocks that we're doing, but, um, but this goes together just the same. So we're gonna sew um, one row together and then we're gonna leave our other little bits aside for when we assemble it together. Now this one, I'm not gonna really be making the wall hanging size quilt. I'm actually um, gonna be doing a little uh, pillow for this to go with it. Um, that's gonna go on the back of my quilt. Now I'm not really gonna be making the full size piece here. I'm actually making this block to go on the back of my finished quilt as part of the label. So just wanted to kinda give you a heads up if this looks a little bit smaller than usual. In just a minute, I'm gonna show you what the large scale block looks like with the uh, light, with the dark colorway. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you what the full size block looks like in the dark colorway setting. So we'll give your seams a little steamroll with our steamless steamroller and then we're done for now. So let's have a look at our other adult size block. <laughs> I just wanted to stop down a little bit and tell you if you're making the large size block like I'm working on right now and don't forget the ones with the light accent color are for the dark background colorway um, but if you are working on the larger size, you can go up to your add a quarter ruler, but I do recommend using the add an eighth on the wall hanging size quilt. Okay, what do you think? Are you gonna make another version out of your scraps when you're done with this one? Do you feel like a paper piecing master yet? Well, you know what? We're at the halfway point, so we've got six more of these to do, and don't forget the 12th one is also our magic time where we get to learn how to assemble all of the blocks together. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you tune in next time and I hope that you subscribe to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel because there's lots of other great content on there. Oh, you don't know where to go? Oh, it's just easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Camilla. That's a cut. That's a cut, honey. <laughs>